Hey guys, welcome. This is Mark with D7 Drones. Thanks for tuning in today. So in this video, I'm going to cover the basics about Aperture, including answering questions such as what Aperture setting offers the sharpest image? How does Aperture affect depth of field? How does Aperture affect appearance of sun flares? How does Aperture allow control over motion blur in your photos? And do you need ND filters if you can close down the Aperture allowing use of an effective lower shutter speed. Adjusting the aperture controls the amount of light hitting your camera sensor. Opening up the aperture by lowering the f-stop number and closing down the aperture by increasing the f-stop number. Opening up the aperture one stop from say f5 to f4.5 doubles the amount of light and closing down the aperture one stop then cuts the amount of light in half. When adjusting the aperture f-stop up or down one stop, you can maintain the same level of exposure by adjusting your shutter speed by one stop. This is helpful when using ND filters so you can adjust both the aperture and ISO to help set the effective shutter speed to get cinematic motion blur, meaning setting your shutter speed to be double the inverse of your video frame rate. So let's get into the fun stuff here with some testing. Here I'm going to show you the effect that Aperture has on the appearance of sun rays. The arrows are pointing out the reflection of the Aperture opening in the actual screen. Here at f11, f10, f9, f8, f7.1, 6.3, 5.6, Five point oh, four point five, four oh, three five, three two, and finally two point eight. I do see a little bit more of the sun rays appearing at two point eight than three point two. So now let's take a quick look at some still photos at decreasing f stops. The highest f stop number f eleven has the most sun flares f nine point oh, f seven point one. F5.0 shows a significant decrease in sun flares, F4.0, and F2.8 actually increases a little bit of the sun flares. Depth of field allows you to have a subject in focus while other subjects closer or further away are out of focus. Here's an example of a photo taken with my Panasonic GX85 at F3.8 where you'll see the foreground is in focus but not the background. At f11, you'll see the background is now more in focus. So to test this out with the Mavic 2 Pro, here's a shot at f11 with the focus point on the green boat, and here's a shot at f2.8 when you would expect to see the background to become out of focus. However, there's no apparent change between the two f-stops. So here's one more test with a subject that's a little bit closer, the palm tree, and then at f11 and f2.8, Again, there's no apparent difference between the two f-stops. I do have a separate video on this that goes into a lot more depth. Link is in the description. Higher aperture settings can result in diffraction due to light waves passing through a small aperture opening and interfering with itself causing a soft image. So here I've taken a photo at f11, which is the smallest aperture opening, and I'll zoom in so we can better see any image softness and then I'll open up the aperture at a few f-stops and see if there's any difference in the softness of the images due to diffraction. Here's f8.0, 5 5.6, 5.0, 4.5, 3.5, and 2.8. So in summary for this test, there was no apparent difference in the softness of the image at higher f-stop numbers. Alright, so now let's quickly see how we can control motion blur by adjusting the aperture f-stop and adjusting the shutter speed to maintain the same exposure level. Here's a photo at f2.8 at 1 600th of a second. I'll zoom into the white car and you'll see there's no motion blur. Then I'll close down the aperture to f11 with a longer shutter speed of 1 100th of a second and zoom into the silver car and you'll see there's motion blur. 
So here I have no ND filter. I have my video frame rate at 24 frames per second and I have my shutter speed at 1 50th of a second which is double the inverse of the video frame rate. I have the ISO at the lowest sensitivity 100 and I have the aperture opening closed all the way down to f11 and as you can see I am still getting the overexposure warning. Back up in the air I do have an ND16 filter on and as you can see the overexposure warning with the zebra pattern is significantly reduced. I could adjust the aperture to close it down some more reducing the amount of light and get rid of all the overexposure shown on the screen. So here's a quick summary based on all those tests I've done. As far as diffraction affecting the sharpness of an image did not find any difference. Depth of field same thing no difference. Sun flares least amount was visible between f5.0 through f2.8. Motion blur you can control that to a limited extent. And do you need any filters when you have an aperture to adjust the amount of light? The answer is yes. ND16 should be suitable for most sunny conditions. Alright guys, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Now this was a pretty detailed test that I ran through for the aperture, but hopefully you picked up some things that you found helpful. If you did, appreciate you hitting that like button. And of course I've got a lot more videos coming up, so be sure to subscribe if you like. Alright guys, thanks again. Happy flying. Bye.